All right, so part two follow-up. So this is the case study that I posted yesterday. Uh, granted, there was just very little information, but you got a patient who is short of breath and they have wheezing and rails. So given the presentation with that and what you see on the monitor, what would you do after oxygen? All right, so the, a variety of comments and, and yeah, there were some other simple things that were not included like setting them up, you know, increasing oxygen and, and so on, but let's tailor in on the question. All right, so let's break down what we have here. Um, really, all of those answers would be applicable to this patient. However, the order of which you give them is what matters the most. All right, so if we look up here at the monitor and specifically look at the waveform, the qualitative and quantitative measurements of that capnography. So with wheezing, if it is a bronchoconstriction issue, we're going to see that slow up sloping or the general shark fin appearance within that waveform. So this patient has rails and wheezing, but the wheezing based on the capnography is not caused by a bronchoconstrictive or an inflammatory response. It's due to that fluid shift. Okay, so one of the first lung sounds you'll actually hear in a, uh, a CHF, CHF patient is acute wheezing due to that fluid buildup and just slightly narrowing passageways. And there's also like a, a, a reflex defensive mechanism that the lungs put in of constricting down, trying to, pr to lower that pressure gradient to reduce the fluid shifting uh, through the alveolar membrane. All right, so then let's break down this. So obviously it's a CHF patient, okay? So Lasix, yeah, they would need Lasix if it's a definitive cardiogenic fluid issue. Uh, nitro, that could be used as well. Albuterol, sure, and CPAP. All right, so first and foremost, your treatment is gonna be with CPAP of increasing that pressure within the lungs to overcome the over the overpressure of the vascular system to shove that fluid back into the vascular space. And then if we're needing to reduce the vascular side of pressure to let CPAP help us more, then we can give that nitro with the CPAP. All right, now once we've got the fluid shift and the pressure under control, okay, because that fluid shift is really a, a pressure and alveolar membrane issue. So once we have the pressure under control by increasing lung pressure greater than the vascular pressure, everything is stabilized, hemodynamics are established, then we could give nitro to further reduce the pressure on the vascular side to aid in pus essentially pushing that fluid back into the vascular space. Okay, now Lasix could be used too, but we need to remember that the onset of action of Lasix is on average like 40 to 50 minutes. So it's gonna provide effort just after a good while. It's not good for the acute phases to try to stabilize or anything. And albuterol could be used too, but if we're already opening, if we give albuterol first, we're going to lower the pressure on the lung sacs. Remember that wheezing is kind of in there as a defense mechanism. So if we give albuterol first, that's just going to make it easier for that fluid to shift from the vascular space into the lung space. So order of this would be CPAP first, then we can supplement with nitro just to augment the CPAP if needed and then you know, give an albuterol and Lasix. So there you have it. Thanks for tuning in.